Hello, my stitching friends. My name is Amanda May, and this is my channel, Artith Design, where we celebrate counted cross stitch, needlework, sustainable stitching, and making all the things. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you are returning, I am so happy that you came back to spend some time with me. My glasses are fogging up. It is humid here in Maryland. I'm on the East Coast of the United States, and my... Air conditioning has decided to go out and they cannot fix it until July, end of July. <laughs> but enough about me. <laughs> Let's talk about stitching. I'm not going to have a set agenda for today in regards to stitching. I do have completed projects to show you, actual and FFO. I have, well, no, I have two FFOs. I have two fully finished objects. I have a finished piece I cannot wait to show you interspersed is probably going to be some stuff of all what I'm all into. I've got a bunch of projects that I've worked on that I can show you. And I got happy mail that I, I cannot wait to show you. So I'm going to try to get it all done as quickly as I can. It is early in the morning. I sent my kids outside to play. My husband is watching the kids. And this is the one thing that I am all into right now. We got this for the kids. Game changer. It is an obstacle course set with like, it's not zip line, but it's it where you do the ratchet against the trees and then you have, it's like uh, the warrior course. And yeah, they're all about it. So we'll see how long this lasts. <laughs> if I can keep them outside long enough to do this video. I, oh my gosh, so many things. I wanted to address a couple of the things that were on my wall. I keep getting questions about. This piece right here is Marjorie Massey. It was a freebie from kittenstitcher.com. The, the heart right here in the corner, that is my piece. It's a punch needle, but it can be translated into counted cross stitch. And it has been, thanks to one of my wonderful stitchy friends. Um, and it's on a piece of wood from um, Not Forgotten Farm, Lori. She is an uh, American folk artist in Virginia. She created that. I have all the details in my book. This is my Be Well sampler. I created this for the hashtag Be Well and Stitch. It's a freebie. This right here, these two pieces are Prairie Schooler Fairies. And I did them with a sulky 12 weight thread conversion. It was like the Crossroads collection. I'm gonna move my camera just for a minute to show you. Okay, moving the camera. I've got this full piece right here is the Quilt Shop by Kingsland. There's a bunch of different ones in the series. The Jefferson Memorial piece that I got that, um, it's dated 1979, and I'm not sure of the artist. And then this piece down here, I got tons of questions about. Thank you all so much. This is actually a 16th century, uh, it's an, oh, look, <laughs> it is an adaptation. Here, I'll just pull it off the wall. Okay, here we go. This is an adaptation of a 16th century block print. It was inside of a book in the public access the, of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I made some changes, so it's an adaptation, not a reproduction, and I stitched it all using the sulky 12 weight threads, and I created this pattern specifically to do for demonstration purposes for the intro to cross stitch video series I did early last year for Sulky, but they just released it a couple months ago. It's on YouTube and it's on my list, my tutorial list. I hadn't planned on releasing this as a pattern. I just did it for fun and for the video. But if enough of you are interested in having the adaptation, again, it's not the original, but with the colors and everything, I will be more than happy to put the pattern together and release it. It is, again, stitched all on 12 weight cotton, one strand. This is a frame. I, 
I for sustainable stitching it had a, a the blue schoolhouse stitch that I pulled out you, you saw it I got it at the thrift store they're about to throw it away and then I repurposed the frame and then the blue cross stitch I cleaned and it's ready I'm gonna do something with it I was thinking about integrating it into a like a, like a quilt square or making a, a project bag with it but that's another story so thank you all for your kind words and questions about this piece it's it's really cool. I, I've really been enjoying translating the artwork. I don't know if I can hang this up in real time. Nope. Nope, nope. <laughs> well, speaking of fully finished objects, I did finish this piece. It is a stitch by Barbara Anna Designs. It was one of her freebie charts that she had out for the hashtag be well and stitch. This is the key and it is a goose and I love it. I stitched it with an amalgamation, a con it, with a, a bunch of different threads. I used uh, DMC, Victorian Motto, Color and Cotton, Sulky, and I think that's it. <laughs> it is on a piece of the Blue Caribbean linen from Silk Weaver. And then I just placed it, I, I I stretched it and I laced it and I'm so proud. I actually did a really good job lacing and then I put it inside of a, you'll never guess, thrift store frame. <laughs> so I, I was, I tried really hard to make sure that all of everything lined up and I'm really happy with the results. So this is one of the things that I fully finished and I'm super excited about it. I know that Stephanie Webb of Lindy Stitches, she did a really awesome lacing tutorial several months ago. I will link her channel below and she uses um, a thicker like a upholstery thread. I just used my 12 like one strand of 12 weight cotton like extra long length and lace and then added more to the needle and laced. So I used the 12 weight cotton for that. So just something to throw out. And Okay I wanted to show you should we talk about another finish? Yes. Last week I did a tutorial review video on the new Sulky acrylic 12 weight thread. Many of you said you were interested in learning more about it. Well for that thread to learn more about the thread I created this punch needle for sunflowers because I love sunflowers. So I used all of the Sulky for this and it I put it inside of a ceramic drink coaster. I got a set of three. They, it wasn't a set of four because one had broken at the thrift store so they couldn't sell the complete set so I, they had it discounted. Anyway, neither here nor there. I picked this up. I was inspired by um, I think it's Cecilia Turner of Heart and Hand and her beautiful finishes that she do, does in the ceramic bowls. So that's what I was thinking of. That's with that acrylic thread. I did a bunch of other projects. I'm really excited about this. So that's the punch needle application. If you didn't watch my video, I will have it again linked below in my tutorials. I want to say thumbnail. That's not the word. <laughs> playlist. Playlist. All right. So I have that. I have a finish. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm so excited. It is the Autumn Dream by... Uh, cottage garden samplings. It's the number 11 in their series, the songbird garden series. It's a tufted titmouse and bittersweet. And we have, I've seen these, um, I follow the Maryland Biodiversity Project. It's online, Maryland Biodiversity Project. They're doing more and more outreach like to have people in the various counties of Maryland be like taking photos of the different animals, uh, plants, birds, reptiles, <laughs> amphibians that we see to help uh, build the database up. And I saw someone just recently posted a po photo of this bird. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I just finished stitching that. So it made me happy. So here it is without further ado. Ah, look at that. I am so excited. I did iron it. I am so excited for this finish. It is stitched on a 32 count 
toasted almond linen that I got from the Stitching Post in Catonsville, Maryland. They helped me. They did not have, this was the closest they had to this. And I, I love it. I think it works out well. And I used the, the DMC conversion provided in this chart. And I'm very happy with the results. Oh, I'm so, excuse me, everyone. I'm molting over here. I, I love this piece. I made several mistakes, but I left them in. I am happy with it. I love it. I am looking forward to framing it. My only concern is my margins are not what I want them to be, but I will make it work. I did, and so I didn't lose any of my thread count or extra thread. I did fold over the bottom and then like hemmed it with a zigzag stitch. I do not have a serger. I just used my $60 little workhorse of a sewing machine that I truly appreciate. <laughs> and I have been trying really hard to sew all of my edges just to keep them from fraying so I don't have the fabric loss associated with linen. And I just, you don't have stuff kind of flying everywhere. So I'm really excited. Autumn dream. I am not sure if I will be framing this anytime soon. Another th thought I thought, well, because I have a small margin and I love Halloween and autumn, I love all the, the color palette. I thought, what about making even a wall hanging? <sighs> but I feel that that might be too ambitious, but I thought even too like a, some pretty, like the quilt block thin strips down here and then maybe like a scallop or the stylized leaves but I maybe that that might be too ambitious I don't know but I have a finish so that's yay all right I have another finish <laughs> I'm excited about this one okay I am going to be doing a Facebook live event this Friday, June 26th at 2 p.m. Eastern time, East Coast of the United States time, 2 p.m. And I am going to be talking about making accessories. So let me grab it here. <laughs> okay. I... I wanted to talk about how to make little accessories for your insulated tumblers. Joy filled stitcher, Annie, she also, she loves her Yeti cups and I got my husband a Yeti cup and then I have this, it's just, you know, whatever it's, it, it, it does its job, right? Well, so I, I'm, I, I fabricated and made custom drink koozies or cozies and my three-year-old son his birthday anyway uh he goes I really love the outfit you put on your drink cup mommy <laughs> anyway I'm gonna be talking about drink I had to take a drink now excuse me I'm gonna be talking about drink how to make little accessories and how to do it and add your cross stitch. So this is a drink caddy that I, the little, it's a drink caddy that I made and I'll be talking about it more uh, on Friday if you would like to join and ask questions and talk. Well, talk, but type to me. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm really excited for that. And this pattern, if you're interested, the bowl the actual pattern is from Kathleen Barlow Burlew I never I don't I'm not sure excuse me Kathleen if I'm saying your name incorrectly and it's in the June issue of just cross stitch so I I stitched it up but I did create my own drink pattern for little accessories you know and then you can use your vintage buttons or whatever. So I would love it if you wanted to join me for the live. And if you're watching this video here on YouTube after June 26th, I believe they're going to have a playback of the live 
on the Just Cross Stitch Facebook page. Either way, I will link their Facebook page below. If you are interested in making the little drink sewing pattern, I, it's just the sewing pattern. I have it up on my website. I have that linked below. So it has instructions, supplies, and then I custom drafted the sewing pattern. So you can make your own and you can add cross stitch to it or not. <laughs> but you can give your cup a new wardrobe for the season. So that's, that's my other, like I said, the other project that I have been working on. And I, bowl. I've been working on some bowling projects. Yes, I have been. Okay, should we talk about what I have been stitching on this week? I think we should. Okay, I gotta figure out how to move everything around. Oh, I had a couple questions and I do, before I forget. Ah. My happy holidays chart. Thank you all so much for your kind comments about it. Someone asked me if I would chart it, instead of just having happy holidays, if I would also have uh, Merry Christmas. And I am going to chart that for the pattern. Please, please give me a little bit of time. I'm going to try to get it uh, charted and done and ready for Jolly July stitching or Christmas in July. Christmas in July, holiday stitching, winter stitching, yuletide stitching. I'm going to I'm going to, it's going to be done <laughs> before July. I just don't have it ready yet. So please give me some time. So Mary, I'll have the Merry Christmas, the alternate. And then I wasn't sure if anybody, I was thinking about doing Yuletide blessings as well. And so there's a couple different variations. And then yes, I had a question in my tutorial last week about the punch needle. And yes, there I do have a pattern. And that's also on my site. Okay. All right. I worked on some more of the little Prairie Schooler Night Flight. And I'm using, I used the Victorian Motto Purdy Orange for that. And then the 3371. Not my proudest floss organization moment, but there it is nevertheless. And I am stitching it on a piece of 1776 32 count linen from Color and Cotton. So I got, I got the moon and I got the rest of her done and I started working down on the house. I started stitching her, I used the full black the um or charcoal black at one two three four the sulky just one strand and not my favorite so i went and i on this piece so i went to using two strands of the dmc 3371 instead which was the called for for the moon and that and i love the coverage it gave me and then the purdy orange is that custom color that uh, Nancy Turner, a Victorian motto created for me for the banana pants purdy pattern. So I had the, I have some more, my own stash of orange that I used for that. So I'm really happy with how this is coming along. I am debating about if I want to just do the center and turn it into an ornament, or if I want to add all of the fencing and the numbers. I haven't quite decided yet. I'm just going to keep stitching and see what happens. Uh, one thing I've noticed about myself is that I am a process oriented stitcher. So for me, it's the joy of actually stitching. I'm not terribly concerned about finishing in regards to my personal stitching projects. Professionally, of course, I want to get it done. I want it to look great. I don't want to be sloppy. So it, it, I, I'm happy that I have a mixture of two. Someone had asked me how I had time to be a designer, designing and creating my own things, but also have time to stitch other people's work because several designers in this industry do not stitch other people's work, which is totally cool. That's fine. 
for me personally, I need to have a separation between my job and my hobby. And so because of that, I'm able to hobby stitch like my personal stitching stuff and then and, and enjoy the process of stitching and then for professionally working on things and getting them done. And I also notice too that if I am overly tired or the kids where I don't have 100% attention on my stitching, I make a lot of mistakes on my model stitches. So it's nice that if I want to stitch, I don't have that pressure of being perfect on my personal stitching. So I'm able to enjoy it more. Not that I don't enjoy stitching my models. I do enjoy it. <laughs> but if I am not 100% engaged in that, I make mistakes and then you have to frog and that just takes more time away from creating and developing. So that's my, <laughs> that's my long-winded spiel. I worked a little bit more on Needles Dance. My husband bought me this pattern or bought me like the whole box kit thing from one of the needle workshops in, when it was exclusive to just the needle workshops that went to the 2019 a Nashville I think it was like the finishing class or some sort of class on that so I'm stitching it with all the called for colors on the called for fabric and I really like this piece I have the first run of the pattern uh they did come out with a second printing last year so but if you have the first run of the pattern the little arrow right here on the pattern is incorrect and it's so just be mindful I started this in the center so I, I took my pre-cut fabric that they sent me I started in the center and worked my way down only to find out that that center mark was incorrect on the that center mark right there was incorrect so I don't have a very good margin but I had I had was too, I've, I've I'm in too deep I'm committed to this project so I'm going to go ahead and finish it with them with the the margin I know that I reached out to um Kathy Haberman she is one of the designers for this chart I reached out to her and she reached out to the her the because it was a collaboration thing and they immediately fixed it for the second printing so she she got it taken care of, but I'm just saying if you have that first run pattern from 2019, to just be mindful of that if you haven't started stitching this yet. I say that because I know several of us, we like to collect the charts, but we don't necessarily start stitching them right away. So if, you, if you've collected the chart and you have it in your stash, just look for that little arrow and make sure it's in the right place or adjust accordingly. Okay. The next question I I got and I keep getting, which is totally cool because that means y'all are very into this project, the Bouquet of Sunshine project. I am doing it just as the center three sunflowers. It is in the back issue, the July-August issue of Cross Stitch and Country Crafts from 1992. If you can find this magazine back issue, that's what it's in. It is also in the, the book 101 Best Cross Stitch Designs from Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. Unfortunately, that book is very expensive. I'm watching it tick up on Amazon. It was at like $35 and now it's over $50. And then I saw some booksellers had it up for over $100. Take that for what you will. Uh, if you are in the thrift shops, I always go and look if they organize their book sections or use bookshops, you know, go and look in the craft section to see if you can find some of these books that, or back issue magazines. Also the secondary market, eBay, Etsy, Facebook Marketplace. I know several Facebook groups that um, buy, sell, and trade. I'm not I can't steer you 
<laughs> in any direction other than whatever price point you feel comfortable purchasing something like that for. So with all that said, here is my part here. And I'm so excited. I got more of the green shading done here and the little interspersed here. I am so happy with how this is turning out. I can't even, oh, I'm so happy. I will say, however, that when you have a three-year-old that loves to color and mark, that you must keep a close eye on whatever little gadget you're using to mark your goodies up with. So I have the retractable highlighters, which are amazing, okay? But my kid likes to take them and he likes to open them and then he likes to mark with stuff. And one thing that he loved marking with Yep. So this happened. Let me tell you what happened. <laughs> so here, my, oh, anyway, my chart, I have a working copy and I, I marked it. Then he, I'll show him where he can mark on my chart and he likes to take and mark it. Yeah. And then he took it and was like marking with his, on his own little paper. And then he set it back down because I have like a little lap thingy. He set it back down. I wasn't paying attention. He set it, where'd it go? He set it down and that happened. So my project is probably getting a bath and seeing if this comes out. If not, again, I got another memory. Last year, my wonderful ch children uh, ate their chocolate granola bars over my piece. <laughs> in <laughs> my comfort lighthouse cross stitch and it was stitched on a um the fog sea foam fog it was one of the really beautiful pieces by r and r reproductions which you don't wash because you wash it and then it the color changes so i have speckles no it's not the what's the spray the aged walnut spray no that is pure granola goodness. That's another reason why I've been leaning more and more towards stitching with the <laughs> fabric and threads that I know that I might have to wash. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, all you can do is laugh at this point, right? And we can look back 20 years from now and say, that's the granola. That's where my kid got the highlighter, all the things. My next project is Six Men on a Dead Man Ship by the Crete Collection. This is Skeleton Crew. I got more of the sail done and a little bit more of the second skeleton. So I've made it up here. This is on a piece of cauldron. Cauldron by Picture This Plus. This was a piece of fabric that I got from Kitten Stitcher. And I am excited to start working down on the ship. I did a full sulky color conversion and which I have, I did a full conversion. So I've been working with that. And of course I misplaced one of my, the bobbins, the brown that for the ship, because I'm using it in another project. I think I'm using it on a Barbara Anna piece. So I'm, I'm sidelined on that for a little bit and that's okay. I, it's not like I don't have enough to stitch. All right. The next piece that I am working on, I have, I have so many things to show you. It's so exciting. So yeah, here, I think it's, it's one, it might be in the bobbin down here. I'm working on the Barbara Anna piece, uh, the light, and this is on 36 count chickpea. And I got more of her bustle skirt bottom going and the tail. I follow uh, some of the, the reenactors and the historical dress um, artists on Instagram. One of them is American Duchess. And they just came out with a book last year that I read. Um, 
and there's a woman her name is Cheney and she does she, she her her profile is not your mama's history she does an amazing job um talking about being a black reenactor so it's been really cool to kind of like I'm stitching historical dress and then learning about the history of historical dress there's YouTube videos I started watching one reenactor video she talked about you know, wearing for five years straight, wearing historical clothing and the linen undergarments and then the silk over and all the different things and how the interplay of the climate and the seasons with the clothing that you're wearing. So I thought that was really cool. So I'm like stitching the bustle on this, <laughs> learning about that. I will have that stuff linked below. All right, the last thing, does it the last two things I've been working on? Okay. What have I been working on? Oh, okay. I put on my little, my cross stitch flamingo shirt today to talk. I got, I got some of my flamingo done. Look at this. So in case you're wondering, <laughs> this is my hot house petunia designs. And I saw this, this was at 2020 Nashville Needlework Market. Julie of um, Gulf Coast Stitches was doing one of her videos where she was walking. And I was like, that's, and I kind of yelled at her through the Instagram live, which of course she can't hear me. So then I I'm typing a, I need that pattern in my life because who doesn't love a flamingo riding a bicycle? <laughs> I am stitching this on a piece of 14 count, it's like a mystic blue that I got at the thrift store. It's like amazing. So I am stitching. I just kind of rolled it over and started stitching it. I just started grabbing colors because I was not entirely happy with the amount of colors in this chart. This is a small little chart. <laughs> she has like 27 different colors and I'm not over exaggerating and like all different brands. Like, uh, -uh I'm not doing that. <laughs> I just grabbed a bunch of things. I did, however, um, the one thing as I dropping stuff, the one thing that I am really excited about is the bicycle. I'm using the satin. It's S995, the satin. Oh, of course, you can't see that. Oh my gosh. So it's got that like shininess, like a metallic, but it's not a metallic. It's like satin and it's, it is a slippery little sucker. But that's been fun trying out a new floss. I'm using Victorian Motto and DMC and stuff in there. So I am going to finish the basket of fruit. And then I need to add like the, the spokes, the wheels, the lemon spokes, and then his little flamingo wheels. And he's holding, he's got like a basket of fruit. I think there's like key limes and oranges, all the things, you know, to make a tropical lemonade. Pink lemonade. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds so good. <laughs> All right. The last thing I've been working on is out of this magazine. And of course, I did not put a pin in it. Oh, okay. I'm so excited about this. It is Enjoy Summer. It's got a lighthouse. It's got birds. It's got blue crab and a seahorse. I love this seahorse. Look at that. Isn't that so cute? So I pulled out my color and cottons. These were all in her limited edition patriotic thread box that she had last year. I participated in and bought one of her little boxes and I'm so excited about it. So I have all those threads and then I added like the parchment and some other just random. So I started this. And it's on a piece of smoke blue linen, uh, smoke blue Edinburgh linen. And I am so excited. So I've got to get the third little house and then I can start adding the ship. So I started, I started with the clouds and kind of working my way down. I would love to have this done whenever I can have it done. <laughs> But I really like this. So I'm I'm really excited about this that project.
I originally saw it um, in the digital version of the magazine on Annie's publishing website, but then my physical copy of the magazine came in. So I'm able to show you that in real life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, those are the projects that I have been working on this week. We are we are over 30 minutes, but we're going to keep on talking. We're going to see what happens. I don't know how long my kids are going to be out on that obstacle course. I, I don't, but I'm trying to keep them physically active and engaged and happy with everything happening in the world. And you know, things we, you know, having the not yet conversations, like we're going to hopefully get back to, to, to doing things, but not yet. But I have an announcement. My child, my five-year-old child has decided she wants to learn how to cross stitch. Yes, seriously. I'm so excited. So my kid and I have been working a while on drafting up a little pattern truth be told, I feel like this is a little too advanced for her. But from everything that wonderful floss tubers and stitchers have said is it's not, it's not a matter of whether or not it's above their skill set. It's a matter of if they are interested and engaged enough to try it and to learn it and to work through it. You don't want to give them a simple, simple pattern that they're like, eh, because they don't want to take the time to do it. So she told me she wanted to stitch a unicorn and she wanted to help me make a unicorn for her to stitch. So this is my pattern. I'm going to show you the chart. It is a collaboration between my five-year-old and myself. And this is her planned stitching start. Love it. Look at those rainbow legs. I assert they're 1980s leg warmers and she said no they're just rainbow legs but she has no frame of reference of the 80s and leg warmers because she's too young to watch Stranger Things or Goonies. So what are you gonna do? Okay so she wanted the rainbow mane, the heart, the thing, the gold and then my three-year-old's arguing that the the horn needs to be blue or green and not yellow and then she's crying and he's crying it's like it's just a unicorn horn <sighs> center so I am excited for this I have ordered size 24 um, needles but then I feel like I need to do a size 22 going through my fabric for 14 count she wants to do it on a hoop so I'm trying to get this all set up because I want her to like cross stitch I don't want to make her resentful of me because I cross stitch a lot you know I want her to want to do it so <sighs> fingers crossed wish me luck that we start this and by we I mean her and me going yes that's how you stitch and helping her tie off the ends and thread the stuff and <sighs> I have control issues so this is going to be a good lesson for me yay so there we go I have so much happy meal to show you. So I'm going to take a sip of my, of my coffee. It's not even a halt. What am I saying? Oh, y'all, I got so much stitchy kindness in the mail. I am blown away. I would love to share with you the stitchy kindness that I received. To say that I cried is an understatement. I sobbed like those big crocodile sobbing tears of just love and appreciation and joy. So thank you. Thank you for this. So I'm going to share with you. It really, it really brightened up my life. I've been, I love floss tube. I, I love coming and talking about cross stitch and the fact that uh, several of you shared your love and joy with me really means a lot. So I'd like to, I'd like to show you what I got. I'm going to take another sip. The, the first thing I got was from Patsy and she stitched me something and she, a beautiful note, but look at what she stitched me. 
Look at that little bookmark. I love it. Look at those beautiful bright colors. They're in all the colors that I love and they're little snails. I love this so much. So she made me this little bookmark and I love it. I cannot wait to have it up. And so she ha she stitched it and then she's got, it's got like that cool adhesive tape on the back and then the nice raw edge lining uh, border on the 14 count blue Ada. Thank you so much, Patsy. I love it. So I got, she sent me that. And then I got a wonderful care package in the mail from Allie. Allie encouraged me last year to enter the Just Cross Stitch ornament contest, which I then won. So I've had, I feel like I've had some really awesome cheerleaders and, and really wonderful people in my life, thanks to Floss Tube. And uh, so she sent me a gnome, which I have to show next week because I already put it out on my shelf. So she sent me a gnome. We love gnomes. I love gnomes. So, no, and then she sent me a beautiful card and it's one of the, the cards um, with a photo of the Mirabilia. Look, isn't that pretty? And she sent me some floss to try, which I have never seen this floss before. Um, Rumpleberry, I'm not sure, but look at the variegation. Isn't that so pretty? So she sent me this floss to try, the card, and then she sent me fabric. So she sent, uh, there's some really pretty flannel and some Christmas. Look at this little Christmas, look at the little elf. And I'm just, I'm really excited. Oh, there's like a rubber ducky in there. Been hearing a lot, um, Emily C. of Eclectic Possessions and her fundraiser with the Advocates for Children. I will have it linked below. So rubber duckies, all the cute things. And then she also sent me, as if this wasn't enough, she sent me some charts that I had never, I, had, I hadn't seen before. So in all things give thanks, which is Liz Lizzie Kate, I'm looking for a year. In all things give thanks, it's number nine super cute if i stitched it i might just do the pumpkin not sure and then i have never seen this one before i am a huge hands-on design fan and mid-century fan and look at that look at that so i'm so excited for this one thank you so much Allie. i i appreciate you and when you wrote on the bottom of the card you matter and your stitching matters i mean i'm just <laughs> Because that's one thing that I, I, I truly believe and I, um, I want you all to know that I do appreciate all of you and that you matter and your stitching matters. Don't let anyone minimize your hobby or your passion. If it brings you joy and meaning, then, you know, that's awesome. Um, speaking of you matter, I will have it linked uh, down below. There is a children's book that's called You Matter. And we watched the story time where the author reads it aloud and shows you the illustrations. I will have that YouTube video linked below. But his book is awesome and I have it on my wish list to order. So awesome. Okay, the next bit of happy mail I have is from Karen. Let me moving stuff out of the way here. And Karen sent me some goodies. Karen is a true kindred spirit with me. We both stitch in hand and it, we both like similar designs and projects and everything. And I felt like she went into my mind and she read my mind. And then she said, here, I am your stitching angel. And here you go. She sent me the, the one pattern I from market that I really wanted that I didn't buy because budget. <sighs> Lindy Stitches, needle worker, how does your garden grow with silver bells and cockle shells and pretty beans all in a row? Or with hand dyed fabric floss and pins and scissors lined up in a row. <laughs> I love this so much. Oh, so she sent me this, a wonderful note. I love quilts. 
I had never seen this before. Guess what's on my next two stitch list? Quaker Quilts by Carriage House Samplings. Look at that. Yes, please. I, I can't believe it. So I love this so much. It is dated 2015. So it's not, it's five years old. Marty Barrick, uh, she's the owner of Cottage House Samplings. She still has, they have a website. They There's designs available. I, a couple weeks ago, last month, I came out with, you know, stitch all the Kathy Barracks. <laughs> or anything affiliated with Kathy Barrick, you stitch it. And so I gotta, I gotta keep my rule up. And so I, I'm going to start this sooner rather than later. I think I will be doing a thread conversion though. I'm not, I love the design, but I want to brighten it up a bit. She stitches with NPI silks. I have never tried NPI. I have never tried NPI. They are based in California and they import their silks from overseas. So um, she does, they do have a DMC conversion for this, but I think I, like I said, I'm going to brighten it up and pick out fabric for that. Another piece that I really wanted to stitch and I had Stitch NV is the piece from Heart and Hand that was for the Halloween mystery box that Color and Cotton put out. Was it 2018 or 2019? 2019. I, when I, I mean, I wished I would have got the Halloween box and I didn't. And so I had regret, but thank you, Karen. I have it now. She sent me the pattern and she sent me all of the goodies to finish it, including the jack-o'-lantern colored Rick Rack. Because y'all, my favorite color from Color and Cotton is Jack o' Lantern. And look, oh, look, there it is. Jack o' Lantern. No, it's Pumpkin Glow. It's Candy Corn. Well, it looks like Jack o' Lantern, but oh my gosh, love it. So I am so excited. I have this and the finishing. So I want to work on this. I just need a piece of green linen. And this is on also on my short list. The next piece she sent me, the summer salt boxes. Yes, look at those little salt boxes. We just saw a the finish from Spring Green, Wisconsin. The shop Country Sampler has this finished and they finished it as the Polaroids shaped, mounted, I have Brenda Sampler Stitcher from Brenda and the Serial Starter posted a photo of it and it's awesome. So I had been wanting to stitch these and now I can. So I'm really excited for the salt shakers. And then for Jolly July, I she sent me a bunch of Christmas stuff that I cannot wait. I'm going to put this on my um, immediate radar to stitch list stuff. So in no particular order, I got By the Bay Needle Art, and it is Joy, the little ornament, and it comes with the, the little bead accessories. So this should be a quick little stitch, and it's so cute. I love it. So that's By the Bay Needle Art. The next one is the Scarlet House coverlet Christmas and I have not seen this one before and I love it I love the the quilt stars and the I love the trees I love it so much so I'm not sure maybe if I would just stitch like part of it or if I would do the whole thing I, I really like it I do so and then if I did Christmas I don't know if I would do like 2020 or leave like that arbitrary date in there but and then she sent me not one, not two, not three. Yes, three. <laughs> one, two, three of the mystery, the Holly and Hearts Mystery Sampler Club, a Christmas sampler presented in three charming parts. 
so there she said so I got this from Lizzie Kate and that is so dang cute it says I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all year through it's got the poinsettias it's got a cute little cottage so cute those are all on my immediate radar for Jolly July but wait there's more she sent me two different Elizabeth's needlework designs. These are from 2017. There's springtime, simple samplers, and summertime. Oh, love them. Then she sent me, she must know I like Shakespeare's Peddler. I finished um, Here Lie My Needles, and I, I did another one of her adaptations. Anyway, I've done two of Teresa's pieces and then she sent me faith love and hope and this one the Christmas colors MD sampler another Christmas one and this I really like this I have to show you and once I show you you're not going to be able to unsee it I'm telling you okay are you ready so the love I love the love okay her that looks like Ed Sheeran I've told Teresa before, I said, you know, your Shakespeare peddler, your logo you, has Ed Sheeran on it. She's like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> so there you go. Now, every time you look at this, you'll think of Ed Sheeran. The next thing she sent, y'all, this is also on my wish list. The Blue Flower Summertime Quilts by Janine McGowan. And look at the cute little things. So I love that putting it out on the line. Fun little fact. Clothes lines and kind of talking about the history of textiles and how we clean and dry clothing. One of the things that I realized is that like my kids don't know what a clothesline is necessarily. Like I grew up knowing what clotheslines are. But one thing to think about is like in the United States, many communities have laws, covenants, or rules surrounding clotheslines out in the yard. Many of them, it's the idea that it lowers your property value or it makes you appear less than because you can't afford to have a dryer. That is the assumption. Or, and so just remember there's the historical underpinnings of things and like simple things like clotheslines like many of us can't legally put up clotheslines I have a friend down the road in Howard County and her HOA says she cannot have clothes or any type of clothesline up between 9 and 5 um seven days a week between 9 a.m and 5 p.m seven days a week um, another friend, um, their covenant has a, you can't have clotheslines at all. So like if you were to hang up your quilts, like you could get fined for it. So just, you know, fun little piece of history. Stuff happening. Um, I got a freebie, Jardin Privé. Cannot show it to you. Love it. And then oh, look at this little, look at this one. So cute. I love it so much. The little sheep. And then I love the little umbrella. So cute. My clothesline tangent. Sorry about that. I just, I've got to find the reading resources to link and I, I, I can't think of them offhand. So I apologize for that. So we're just going to keep talking here. Look at this. I looked up the beehive needleworks. I liked the colors here um, the dungarees cucumber endive garden gate toasted barley dungarees i yeah i said dungarees twice that's <laughs> but that blue dungarees i really i really like that 
The next piece, again, love the alpaca farm. There are several alpaca farms here in Maryland and people um, make beautiful fiber with them. Oh, if you knit, there's magpie fibers. I will have them linked below. They're out of Frederick, Maryland, magpie fibers. I've been following their stuff and that's really awesome. So alpaca farm. I love it so much. I've got some such cute pictures with alpacas. I think they're so fun. All right, she, uh, out of just pull, you know, out of magazines and stapled some of the Christmas ornaments. I love the piece. And, oh, I love them all. <laughs> I love them all. All right, I know Steph from Pam and Steph, Jeff's Keep Stitching was doing the Snow Village. And so I got, now I have Snow Village, it's so cute. And I have never stitched anything by, um, with thy needle and thread, but there's a little, this is a little um, bluebird out my window. Um, let me see. That's pretty cute. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm afraid like any minute now my kids are gonna run through the door. She sent me the Summer House Stitch Works set from 2019 from the Silver Needle, the Fragments in Time series. So I'm going to try to show all of them here. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at the little orchard. And... That to me looks like a windmill. I know it's it's not, but it, it the pretty flowers. And I love all of them have the chenille around. And yes, look at that. And then the tree of life. And look at that salt box house. It wasn't until floss tube that I had a true appreciation for salt box houses. I've always had an appreciation for log cabins, straw bale homes, earth ships, all that stuff. But now I can add salt boxes to the list. The next thing she sent me, look at these cute, look at these. Oh, the collection privé, tra la la collection privé. Les, les Amis de Père Noël, les, um, the Friends of Father Christmas. So there's a Rudolph, and then there's like little Kit Kats. They're so cute. And then Jardin Privé. I've never stitched anything from Jardin Privé, and I'm really I'm excited. Here's this one. She's got she's got she's sitting out with her quilt stand, quilting under the beautiful. I would like to say it's willow tree. Love it. And then another Joyeux, Joyeux Noël collection, tra la la. Another one of the cute little whimsical reindeer. And I really like this tree where the bow is like just as big as the tree. It makes me think of um, Christy. She's in Nevada. What's her channel? All of a sudden I'm just blanking. She has beautiful finishes. I love her finishes. And her husband just recently like created a, a wood barn display. Oh, it's so pretty. I'll link her below. I'll remember it as soon as I stop filming. I know I will. Roveris, love. Oh, look at that. It's so cute. Love grows here. Okay. And then I got a few more. She sent me a long dog sampler, pastel folk Christmas, and a couple others here. And she sent me home for the holidays. Oh, I'm, I love this. I've been wanting to stitch this piece. I know several people have finished it. Um, Misty Purcell, Luminous Fiber Arts, Donna Ray. Um, flannel jammies farm so many and I just I still I love it even I see it all the time I still love it so the beautiful beautiful stuff um Jordan she is 
the little stitch girl. So there's cute little, little yellow houses. That's cute. And then I really like this one, hands on design. Of course I love it. It's hands on design, duh. Look at those cute little houses and I love the finishing. There's more and I'm almost at an hour. Should I keep going? No, I should probably stop. I have more to show you from Karen though. That is just the patterns she sent me. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you again, Karen. And I'll show more uh, next time. I do want to say that over the last couple weeks, I reached 2000 subscribers. Thank you all so much. I truly appreciate it. I am going to be putting together a package for a giveaway that I will do next week. I've got a lot happening right now. I'm sorry I didn't. We're going to wait another week. <laughs> We're going to do my 2000 subscriber giveaway. I am so excited. I I'm so excited and happy then that you joined me this week to talk about cross stitch, random historical tangents, things that I'm all into like coffee, koozie outfits and bowling and quilts and obstacle courses for young children. <laughs> Please know that I appreciate you that you matter, your stitching matters, and I look forward to talking about needlework and all the things next time. Take care.